Well, Greg, um, it, it, you know, just watching from home, some of you guys weren't in a good spot for about 60, maybe 65 minutes. And then what did you see? Recording sort of, in progress. You guys there over the last, I guess, last 20, 25 minutes there. I think, uh, yeah, I feel like we were out of sorts for, like you said, a good 60 minutes or so. Um, just our, our movements positionally, just we weren't in the right spots at the right times. We were, uh, when we did break lines, we were very impatient and trying to finish attacks so fast. And then our front group was getting separated from our back group. Um, and then it was just, when those attacks didn't, finish or work, then it was just so easy to get out of their half of the field back into our half of the field. Then it's just an incredible amount of work having to recover and defend back in your half of the field only to do it again. And so, you know, one of the things we talked about at halftime was just a being a little more aggressive in our step out presses. I think we were giving them way too much time in the, in the first half um, on the ball to just kind of set us back and, and start to pick us apart, move us around. And and then to find the right moments to be just be patient on the ball and, and not be in such a rush to have to finish the attack in one or two, but to, to actually force a team that's playing with two forwards on the field to have to defend their half of the field sometimes and force those forwards to have to come back and help the opposition. And then they have less opportunity sometimes to get out of their own half. We can make second and third chances. I just thought we made better decisions with the ball as it, as it progressed. We were... We were more patient at the right times. We were fast at the right at the right times. Uh, yeah, and then we, we, we found some seams and we found some holes and we finished some goals. I think we scored, what, five and got two called back, if I recall correctly. And uh, so things were, were flying. Once we kind of got on the right foot, things were, were moving for us. Um, so, and then I think once we started to get goals, I just thought our overall defensive effort just started to improve a little bit. Our intensity started to improve. Uh, I thought the middle of the field was just too too open. Like we didn't do a good job of closing off the middle of the field with our wide guys squeezing inside and our our back to front being connected. Uh, we were conceding too much space to a team that's good with the ball, and that that gave us problems throughout the course of the night. But we did it. We did the things we needed to do to come back and get uh, get points out of this one. And, and this team has shown, I mean, five games, but you guys have shown. Um, shown a, a tendency to, to fight back when you guys are down. What does that say about this group? Yeah, they they believe in it. They believe in each other. Uh, again, when they can, when we can find the right balance in our game, then we are very dangerous. Um, tonight, for a long stretch, we just didn't find the right balance in the game, and and we can also be very vulnerable if we don't. So I felt like we we found it again towards the end. I think Gaston came in and did a nice job for us. I think when Gaston came in, Ricky started to get a little closer to Gaston, and I think he was too far away from uh, from Eddie for at times, which meant that we had these two pivots, but they were so far apart that they were isolated. And then when Gaston came in, he started getting closer. They were able to combine off of each other a little bit more. I think that drew their midfielders out a little bit, and that opened up the spaces behind them where we could build some speed. Uh, Mark started to drop a little lower and roll out. So just some other things to kind of open up pockets started to happen for us, and that that got us going. But the group has been resilient. Um, again, not an easy place to play, and it took us a little while to find our way in the game, but we did. Um, the other side of it is we got to defend set pieces better. I mean, that we we had to defend a lot of set pieces, but we defended. We didn't do our, our job, and that's been a five, I think, we've given up now in the course of the season. Uh, which is too many. So we've got to reassess whether we're doing the right things with the group and and what needs to what needs to change there. Go ahead, Josh. Hey, Greg. Uh, just looking at uh, Gabriel Peck, his first start and maybe our longest look at him so far this season. Um, you know, maybe what did he do that you liked, and and does he cause you maybe some issues on defense or balancing things? What 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 did you see from him? Yeah, I think. <clears throat> You know, I think what the way we were attacking in the early part of the game wasn't necessarily good for anyone. It was uh, anyone who was trying to get connected. I think he's trying to build relationships on the field in terms of positional relationships with some of the guys still. Um, you know, when he was coming inside, he was a little bit too high, so it was hard to find him. Uh, he needs to come down a little lower so that we can we can find him when he's in that inside position. Uh, when he's wide, I think he can be a little more patient and allow us to bring the game to him sometimes. Um, but he'll, these are things that he'll pick up. It, for me, they're, 
their tactical nuances in our group and being able to recognize when to do what and and how to play with the with the guys that are over there on that side with them uh, on both sides of the ball even defensively you know defensively I felt like he got very very focused on defending the left back and often was very wide and that was one of the reasons that the middle of the field was was pretty open is because I felt like he was a little bit wide at times which meant that our two midfielders were covering having to cover a lot of extra space Ricky was a little high back line a little low and it just became a ton of territory for them to to work and, and we all as a group needed to become a little more compact and, and close the middle of the field uh, defend from inside out and we we were just all a little bit separated um, and I think that played a little bit part of it as he's still trying to get used to the group and then and some of those uh, some of those nuances inside of that and some of the things we're asking but it was his first start so uh, his first run for 90 but we, we see some things that he's capable of doing uh, and more of that's going to come out as he gets more settled into the group, I'm sure. Thanks, Craig. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Charlie. Hey, Greg, Charles Brown from MLS Soccer. Um, I want to ask you about two guys. Um, can you speak about what Dayon is doing well right now to be uh, top of the Golden Boot race in the league after five games? And also a guy I've known a long time, um, Mark Delgado, um, seems to be really playing at a high level in, in all contexts right now. Yeah, with with Dayon, he's he's doing a good job of showing up at the right places at the right times. You know, uh, when the team is attacking in the right ways, like we said this for a long time that our forwards are going to get chances when we when we attack in the right ways, and we're able to move center backs out of the face of the goal when we're able to to get our wingers behind the back line. He's he's going to be the beneficiary of that. Um, today, he made a nice little. Nice little cut in behind the the center back. It actually, actually, I think it happened twice in a row. The first one he got called off sides, and then it was the same exact play where he actually uh, was onside and buried it. So I think again, his reads and his tendencies on what you know when Ricky gets the ball and in some of those positions, what movements make sense. At times, I've talked to him about not running in straight lines, but coming from angles because it shows Ricky where he wants the ball. And and so these little things are are happening for him at times now more so than they have. Um, but he he's going to be the beneficiary of the pace that we have on the outsides with Joe and and the work that's that's being done in the wide channels. Um, as far as Mark, uh, he's just he just understands so well what we're trying to do, and then he has Joseph flying around the outsides, which sets up a lot of opportunities for him to to slip passes through and to do things, which is how he's been achieving great assists, just slipping. Uh, Sipping Joe through, finding other runners. He's just playing in his in his pockets, in his space, um, and he understands systematically what we're trying to do so well that he is like he is the epitome of what it looks like for us. And when the system is flowing, Mark's going to be on always. That's just that's just uh, the fact. The other thing that Mark does is he he transitions to defend. He covers ground. He works and he plays at a high intensity for 90 minutes, like like nobody else. And um, that constantly makes him uh in the middle of the game in the middle of the action because he's he's you know he's right there in the game whether it's on the defensive side or the attacking side he's omnipresent in in whatever's happening because of his work rate and because of how how much high speed work he can do to to stay involved in the game um but yeah he's he's certainly uh he's certainly thriving right now inside of the group that's out there and what's happening in the system when it's functioning and we'll wrap with alex Hey, Greg, um, this is the Galaxy's first win in Kansas City since 2019 and your first win over Peter Vermees. I mean, how important is it to, I guess, kind of have these games where you kind of break those negative trends? And, and I guess in the locker room, how are you guys feeling now being able to, you know, come away with the win? I mean, the last couple of games um, with ties. So how important is that as you guys begin to gain more and more confidence as the games start to come ahead? I mean, it's it's huge for the confidence building. I know the group was really frustrated with uh, with themselves in the first half for sure because nothing seemed to be flowing smoothly and and the way we gave up more set piece goals, but but nothing was smooth. Um, I think they knew coming here and even talking to a couple of the guys before they know coming here is a really difficult place to win and a difficult place to get results. Last year we suffered for ninety minutes and got a draw, like really suffered for ninety minutes and got a draw. Um, tonight we didn't play well for solid 60 and, and managed to turn around a 2-0 to get a win. So 
one of those things that you just got to get out of your head that certain places are hard to play in and you just got to come and be a little patient and play your game and trust it. And I think it took us a while to get to that kind of rhythm and that place. Um, but we did. So hopefully that's a reminder for this, this group as we continue to come back here in the future that we just got to stick to certain things and, uh, and we can win the game. Um, so that's a positive. I mean, everything else is, it's about getting three points and, because uh, we felt like we left some points on the table in some of the earlier games. So to come here where you don't always get three points and to get three points is certainly a, um, you know, a bonus for the group in some ways. But um, I think it shows that no matter where we are, this team is capable of, of winning games and causing some problems. So, but we got to do it from minute one and not from minute 65 or whatever. So. Any questions from the room? No? All right. Anyone else? No. Thanks for your time, okay. Vic. Thank you.